In this video, I'm going to show you the formula for dividend yield, walk you through an example, and explain what it means for an investor. Most importantly, at the end, I'll talk about how you can interpret this financial ratio. I hope you find this explanation useful if you're learning about investing in stocks or you're a finance student. Let's get into it. So the formula for dividend yield is actually quite simple. It's dividend divided by share price. And the dividend yield is expressed as a percentage. One thing to keep in mind is that the dividend is the annual dividend of the company. Now, further on in the video, I'll give you a couple of different methods to calculate this dividend if it isn't available. But let's first work through an example. We've got company ABC Limited here with a share price of £10 per share and a dividend of £0.5 per share or 50p. So the dividend yield is equal to 0.5 divided by 10, which equates to 0.05 or 5%. To get to the 5%, you multiply 0.05 by 100. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that the dividend in this case is an annual dividend. Some companies will distribute dividends on a quarterly basis. So if this dividend was quarterly, the dividend yield would be 20%. So that's 0 0.5 times 4 divided by 10, which gives you 20%. So what does this 5% actually even mean? So it means for every one pound that an investor has invested in the business, they've received back 5% or 5p from the business as in dividend. In this case, as they bought £10 worth of shares, they've received 50p in dividends. Now let's take another company. It has the same share price of £10 per share, but a dividend of £1 per share. So a dividend yield of 10%. Now as an investor, does this mean that the company with a 10% dividend yield is a better investment than the company with a 5% dividend yield? Well, not necessarily. It may be the case that the company with the 5% dividend yield is wanting to invest in some property or machinery down the line that can help it grow in the long run. Hence, dividends might be held back by the board of directors, causing it to have a lower dividend yield. On the other hand, the directors and the other business may not see many opportunities to invest in growing the business, so they might be willing to pay out more in dividends. To sum up, it's really important to understand the business you're analysing and its growth strategy before making any conclusions on the dividend yield ratio. So looking at the dividend yield of a business by itself is not useful until you compare it to the dividend yield of a competitor or the dividend yield of the industry or even the dividend yield of an index such as the FTSE 100. Also, if the company you're analysing pays a quarterly dividend and a full financial year's dividend isn't available, you can add up the previous four quarters dividends and use that as a proxy for the annual dividend. On the other hand, you can also multiply the previous quarter's dividend by four to take that as a proxy for the annual dividend. Another thing to remember is that the dividend yield fluctuates as the share price changes. So, what the stock market thinks of a company's prospects plays a part in determining the dividend yield. The dividend yield has an inverse relationship with the share price, so if the share price increases, the dividend yield decreases and vice versa. And finally, it's always advisable to look at dividend yield over a period of time. So if there are any anomalies, such as a large dip in share price, or a particularly low or high dividend, you can get a better sense of what the average dividend yield is. Hope you found this explanation useful. Dividend yield is a really important financial ratio that all investors need to understand.